Welcome to Cisco Tech Beat, the podcast that explores the people and stories behind what inspires the newest innovation. I'm your host, AB, and today I'm happy to welcome George Ramirez, Global Director Automation and Chief Manufacturing Cybersecurity Officer at General Motors. George, welcome to Tech Beat. Thanks, AB. Appreciate it. So, George, before we dive into any technical stuff, I want to hear about your GM story. I heard it's an interesting one. So can you tell us like how you even ended up at the company? Absolutely, AB. So first of all, thanks for having me here. You're welcome. Um, and I like to tell the story because it's a story of uh, determination, right? Mm. Uh, as a young engineer, uh, I was in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and General Motors had just opened a facility. And the word on the street was, don't bother going to GM because <laughs> you're not going to get hired. <laughs> so that became a personal challenge. Right. And I like to tell this story because... I want you to picture this. I walked in the front lobby of that assembly plant in shorts, a t-shirt, flip-flops, wow. and a resume in my hand. <laughs> and I gave it to the uh, receptionist and said, please give this to the director or the manager of HR. Right. I did a 180 and walked away thinking I will get my rejection letter in a week. I did get a letter, but it wasn't a rejection letter. It was a letter for coming interview. And here I am 35 years later with General Motors. So never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Determination and confidence to and walk confidence. in with that outfit. Absolutely. <laughs> I love that. So now you've been at GM for 35 years, which is really an amazing, amazing story. Um, let's talk about the number of plants you have across the globe, because obviously huge company, lots of plants everywhere. Um, what are some of the challenges that you have uh, trying to you know, maintain oversight through that network? It's, it must be you know, really challenging. Yeah. Yeah, if you look at our General Motors, we have over 70 plus sites across the globe. Wow. And, you know, the challenge is we have everything. We have the new, which is, I'll call it the nice. Yeah. But we have a lot of the old, right? And when I say old, I mean old. Okay. Right? Uh, <laughs> and trying to integrate the old technology with the new technology can become a challenge, right? right. Um, you know, just making it work becomes a challenge by itself. Trying to secure it becomes even a greater challenge, right? right? So, uh, so just maintaining old and new technology becomes a challenge for us. Of course, there's a big push to automate more and create more, uh, you know, automate the, the sites, Yeah. You, you know, to get us some productivity in, in, in most cases. Um, and just once again, as you're trying to bring in the new, you can't get rid of the old. Right. So you got to figure out how do you mesh these two worlds together. That's right. To enable operations to continue to operate flawlessly. So um, legacy equipment, new introduction of new technology, and then just how do you secure this, this entire pile of technology that's under this one an umbrella becomes a, a massive challenge for us. Absolutely, but exciting because it means that you have a lot ahead of you to, to accomplish. Absolutely, right? It, it's never a dull day, right? Uh, sometimes, <laughs> uh, you know, and I always tell people, sometimes the stuff that works the best is the old stuff. It doesn't break down as often as that, we might think right. it does. That's right? right. Some of the newer stuff, uh, as they tell me, that stuff is just not built like it used to be built. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you hear that a lot. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, fewer fewer things to kind of go wrong, as it were. Correct. <laughs> so that's cool. Love that. So I want to talk about plant floor security because I imagine that's top of mind. Are there specific Cisco technologies that are you using to ensure that? So the answer is yes, right? We started our journey with Cisco. Um, well, I think it started in 2017. I got involved in 2019 personally, right? So, um, And for me, it was sort of an interesting it was an interesting time because what I knew of Cisco is more of a Cisco is an IT company. Yeah, right. What are they doing in a manufacturing OT environment, <laughs> right? But how can they possibly help me, right? Right. Uh, um, but yeah, that you know, when you look at it, how are we using the technology now? So we work with Cisco to come up with some cool switches, right? Uh, that are leverage that we're leveraging now to be able to have, um, you know, visibility into the environment more so than anything sure. right uh, it's uh you know one of the challenges we had as we as we look at the pre as the previous question was you know how do you secure what and you don't even know what you have to secure yeah, right. Right. So, now we, <laughs> so now we have visibility right it poses a different challenge because now now the bad guys also have access to what i have to secure of right uh but we're using the technology once again to have visibility into the space. You know, using the hardware to also enable us to be able to communicate with some of the, uh, you know, some of the equipment that's out on the plant floor. So, overall, it's been a very good, uh, a, a good, um, you know, a good read for us from a perspective of, you know, keep in mind I said, what is an IT company trying to do in the OT space, right? yeah. in the manufacturing space, and and you guys have proven sort of proven me wrong that you know it is possible, right? Working together, it is possible to be able to get, uh, you know, to get forward movement Absolutely. in some of these technologies. Great. I love that. I want to talk about 
network segmentation? Because I've heard that you are using it or GM is using it. I don't know if it's to battle cybersecurity incidents or how, how are you using network segmentation? Yeah, I mean, the best thing to do to think about that is uh, I like to call it recovery versus just rec- uh, network segmentation. What do I mean by okay. recovery? Um, you know, if you, look at a, if you look at a plant, for example, you know, we, have, we, we, we divide our facility into shops, a body shop, mm-hmm. a paint shop, and a general assembly shop. Okay. Right? Uh, if, you're, if you don't know anything about the automotive industry, body shop is where we do all the welding, paint shop is where we paint it. So now you have a paint it, body and white, as That's we right. call it. <laughs> and general assembly is where we put all the good stuff inside. That's right. It, right. right? Um, and if you don't segment, you know, and then all this is connected to your enterprise level, right? Uh, um, so one of the things we do is we separate the enterprise from the plant and, okay. and we segregate it that way so that right now, luck, luckily, I'll say knock on wood, most <laughs> of the attacks come in through the IT space, not necessarily the OT space. Right? So, okay, yeah. So the first thing we did is make sure that the IT environment is separated from the OT, the, the industrial network, Got it. Uh, to help us with cybersecurity. We want to take that further eventually to also segment, uh, you know, from shop to shop. Right. And this is where the, the recovery part of my comment comes, right? Okay. Because uh, instead of trying to recover three shops, I want to isolate them into three uh, into uh, into three individual shops so that hopefully only one gets down and not ah, the other two, right? That it. way I can recover. It's a lot easier to recover one versus trying to recover all three. Right. I don't know if that makes sense. That makes sense. Me. So you mean that, so like paint versus assembly. So if versus one thing five. goes down, you don't have to shut the whole Correct. chain down. Right now, you would argue that, uh, you know, because they're all connected. Right. If if a, if, an, if an attacker goes in, he could potentially take all sites down. So right. we're using segmentation to be able to at least uh, you know segment shop to shop, and that's why I call it instead of uh, instead of just saying segmentation, I call it faster recovery, right? Because right. when it happens, you know, yeah. I always say when because it's not if. It's, yeah, it's gonna happen at right? some point. Right? When it happens, <laughs> I want to be able to be quick quick to recover a particular shop versus an entire site. Yeah, totally makes sense, and I think I think that's a smart way to go. I mean, you don't have to stop business one hundred percent. You can kind Correct. of like deal with the issue and then. Get things rolling again. So, correct. Very cool. So, not surprisingly, uh, AI and machine learning is something that we're seeing. It's ubiquitous in, in pretty much every industry, obviously in tech. But I'm curious as to uh, how that's playing out in the automotive industry. So, is GM utilizing AI and, and machine learning to advance its own technologies? So, I'm surprised it took 10 minutes, first of all, to get to the AI. <laughs> I was question. like, so you look at the watch. I was like, wait, is there, is there AI in there too? <laughs> okay. But yeah, no, I mean, so yes, right? Right now, I think uh, in any industry, we, besides the automotive industry, everyone's trying to figure out how do you leverage machine learning, how do you leverage artificial intelligence, right. you know, to get you ahead, right? Uh, uh, I don't think there's a single entity out there that is not dabbling in this space Great. to try to figure out how to get ahead, right? Uh, the hard part is there's so much. Right. When you think about it, you know, uh, and depending on who you talk, there's a different version of AI. Uh, I think eventually, uh, my opinion, I think eventually, you know, there will be a standard, I'll call it, uh, of AI that I think will help industry become better. Right. Because right now everyone's sort of working at a different pace, That's in a true. different way. Sometimes the terms get intermingled between machine learning and, 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 and AI, artificial intelligence. Right. Um, so. But to answer your question in short, the answer is yes, right? Uh, in General Motors, we are looking uh, we are looking to see, you know, how do you leverage these type of technologies to further enhance the company, right? Um, we even just recently hired a chief uh, AI officer for oh, the company, right? Okay. So uh, and that's what this individual is charged to do. Look at all the projects that are being done in the company to try to figure out, you know, how do we how do we take all the synergy and move it forward? That's right. Uh, you know, at GM. And I, I like the way you phrase it because it reminds me of what Cisco does when it talks about the use of AI. It's really to enhance uh, operations and make things, you know, more efficient. It's not, a, a, you know, a replace and and ditch, not a replace, right? right? It's not a replace, <laughs> right? It's just to make a hopefully make our lives a lot easier. Yeah, than exactly. It is right now, right? I agree. Uh, I, I use it at work all the time, so I, I, I I'm open to it. It sounds like yeah. everybody else does too. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about something that seems to be common across tech and other industries, which is the lack of skilled workers. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of tech companies are having a hard time filling positions and staffing their their companies. Um, how does GM, is, is there that same kind of, um, you know, demand or lack of skills uh, in automotive industry? And is GM doing anything specific to try to attract more people to really enter this this industry? Yeah, so so the answer is sort of yes, right? Okay. Uh, I think just industry in general is having issues with attracting people. Forget about techs. Yeah, it's that's just true. Just people in general, yeah. right? Um, but uh, one of the things that we're very proud of at GM is we actually have a, a 
technical college, an internal technical college that we've um, <clears throat> developed the curriculum, we've developed the courses that are tailored to the automotive industry, that oh, are wow. tailored to our specific skill set that we need in the plants to be able to run that, right? right. Um, that are tailored to the engineers that are, uh, that are, that are doing, I'll call it uh, the work that's required to program robots, program PLCs, et cetera. Right. So this is for free. One of the things, it's for free for every employee at General Motors, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's offered and it's just, uh, you know, it's just like, Going to college, going back to college, right? Yeah. But it's very technical in nature. We walk you through hands-on. It's uh, manned with ro robots. It's manned with PLCs. It's manned with everything you want, right? Uh, right. Uh, to be able to have people come in in a classroom, we give you theory. But right as the theory ends, then we take you right out to the floor, right? So you can put it into practice. Because uh, the one thing we have learned is, I can teach you a lot of stuff via PowerPoint. But you'll forget about 90% of it after you walk out uh, versus I can still give you that same PowerPoint uh, dive. But right. then I physically now take you to the equipment and I physically make you move the robot, teach the, you know, uh, teach the conveyor, modify a PLC. Right. So that the retention becomes a lot, lot easier. So that's one of the that's one of the ways we're uh, we're working inside the company to try to, you know, upskill, you know, our current right. uh, our current uh, workforce. Right. Uh, and then as we bring in new talent. That's one of the things we try to do, right? Is make sure that you know they go through this, this avenue, so that they can maintain, I'll call it their their sharpness and the resiliency. Absolutely, the plant floor. That's really cool. Having a, a built-in learning platform like that, it's almost almost like a professional development on the you know like on the spot. You you can just get into a specific category. And it literally and is right because yeah. we, it's a whole course menu of what do you want to learn, right. right? And it's all there, different dates, different class times, different classrooms. It's all live, right? So it's not uh, remote, right? Yeah, it's right. all live. In so you have to come up. Uh, you have to come up to uh, to Warren, Michigan, where our headquarters are at, uh, in order to be able to take this uh, this activities or these uh, these lessons. And then, um, like I said, the advantage the advantage we have is that we we outfit the entire uh, the entire learning process by the very robots, the very PLCs, the very right. andons, the very things they're going to see at their sites, sure. right? So sure. it's not a hypothetical, maybe this is the way the <laughs> robot's going to look. No, this is yeah, the way the robot it. looks. <laughs> yeah. And it has our standards. It has everything that we, exactly the way it would operate in the plant. Right. That's exactly the way you're going to see it on the, on the, on the I'll call it the, the college floor. Sure. So theory, hands-on, has uh, really proven to be a, you know, a good success for us, right, uh, within the company. Absolutely. Love that. So looking ahead, I mean, it's an excited time to to be here with all the technology that's happening, you know, in, in every industry. What are you really excited about when you think about your role and GM and just the future of the automotive industry? Yeah, I mean, if you look at, uh, I mean, our, our our CEO and chairman has been very, uh, you know, she has been very vocal about our vision, right? Zero crashes, zero congestion, zero emissions, right? right. Zero, 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 right? right? Uh, and in order to accomplish that, you look at what we're doing right now within the industry, you know, in my opinion, why, why, why do I get excited, right? <laughs> uh, so the internal combustion engines that have been around for a while, now we have this beautiful uh, portfolio of brand new EV vehicles. And yeah. We're the one that offers, uh, I think, my opinion is General Motors is one of the companies that actually does have a portfolio for just about every segment out there. Sure. Uh, more so than some of our competitors, right? right. Uh, um, so we're able to pivot within the company. We're able to pivot to see what the customer demands are. Do you want internal combustion engines? We have them. Or do you want EVs? We have them. Yeah. Right. And now we've we've designed our factories to be able to pivot so that we can balance what's what's the customer demand is and what it needs. Couple that with, you know, how do you integrate more new technology and make it better, make it more efficient. Right. So not only is the portfolio looking better, how we manufacture is also changing, right? Uh, you know, one of the challenges, like I said, is how do I integrate new technology yeah. into existing technology? But it's coming. You know, I see it coming and coming and coming. Where we're just we continue to expand. Uh, you know, the uh, the uh, the technology scope within the, in, the within the company. Yeah, um, and that's why you have a technical learning college inside the company because as yeah. we grow, we develop the coursework that's going to be required you know, to augment or support that technology in the plant floor. So that's right. it's exciting times, right? It is exciting times to, uh, you know, if you look at the automotive industry of where it was and where it's going, um, you know, I'm, I'm ready for the flying car. That's all I can say. <laughs> Me too. The George, George Jetson. You <laughs> that's know. right. 
<laughs> you know, there's a lot to say about the the Jetsons. Oh, a lot man. of stuff has come uh, has come. Uh, <laughs> that is so true, like microwave really. ovens and stuff like that, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. I love I love that perspective too because it's one of the things that I love about Cisco, and I think this is probably one of the reasons we have such a great partnership um, is that we are always looking at the end user experience and how do we innovate, how do we simplify, but make sure that the end user is the most important. And it sounds like that's really the philosophy that you have right. at GM. Yeah, correct. And, and we've been working with Cisco, right? Like I said, uh, an IT company, right, in my <laughs> mind at the time. Uh, yep. Uh, but now you look at what you're doing with us and, you know, we've developed a couple switches uh, yep. uh, with you guys. Uh, they're on the plant floor. Um, and there's probably more to come, right? As uh, I think, uh, you know, we're, we're in this endless frontier, as Star Trek would say, right? Uh, <laughs> that I think there's more to come. It's just, I think it's now just a figment of our imagination. Yeah. Like where do we want to take it next, right? How do you leverage the new technologies, the AIs, the machine right. learnings, et cetera, to make it uh, more efficient, you know, for the manufacturing uh, sites, right? And, and in the end, like I said, if the automotive industry benefits from your technology, I think other industries in general are going to benefit from the technology too. So yeah, absolutely. The partnership uh, to me, the partnership is really good because uh, we're able to get in front of a lot of this stuff, become first users in many cases. That's which right. Which is nice. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But then you know some of the other uh, some of the other customers probably benefit from some of the stuff we've developed together. Agreed. Agreed. And I'm going to steal the endless frontier because it's not the final frontier because yeah. we who knows where it's going to go. But yeah. I, I love that phrase. Yeah, that's yeah. great. <laughs> um, well, I think that's a great place to, to bookend our conversation. George, sure. thank you so much uh, for no, coming out and making time. I know it's crazy here at Cisco Live, um, but I really appreciate your time and your insights into your role and GM and, and the relationship that we have with you. So thanks again. All right. Thanks, Abby. Appreciate it. You got See it. See you next year. Uh, oh, absolutely. All right. <laughs> All right. Take care. Thanks. <laughs>